hello friends welcome to knowledge india once again in this tutorial we are going to talk about a very important topic which is uh, related to cloud front and we will actually see with a demo that how can you serve your static and dynamic content both via cloud front right so there is a uh, there is one more tutorial on the channel in case you want to see how to create a cloud front distribution from scratch please uh, refer the link which is displayed go ahead and uh, look at the creation of cloud front distribution uh, in this tutorial we are going to focus that how can you configure and have your uh, have your uh, dynamic content served via cloud front as well right so as you can see in this diagram and uh, any website you will have a static and dynamic assets right uh, that, uh, for example, anything which is with things which are images, CSS, JavaScript files, any audio, video, all of such things are actually static in nature. Now, you can go ahead and cache these things. Dynamic assets are those which needs processing on the server side. It could be the login part, it could be your name uh, appearing dynamically with the welcome message and all such things, right? So, uh, but then uh, if we cannot cache the dynamic part then what is the benefit of serving the dynamic part as well with the cloud front the benefit is that you will save in terms of cost and you will get better latency as well let us understand it with an example let's say you have a website running and you have hosted that website in uh, let's say london right london region and uh, you have your static assets so stored in an S3 bucket, which is also there in London. Now you have got your uh, users coming from US, you have your users coming from Australia as well, basically from different parts of the world. Now, if you use only, if you use the CloudFront only for static assets, then your uh, static assets get, uh, get served from an edge location in US to the US uh, users and from an edge location in Australia to the Australian users. But the dynamic content always travels over the public network from London to US and Australia. Now, if you start serving your dynamic content as well via CloudFront, the good thing would be your the traffic would leave Amazon network only from the edge location which is near to the customer, which means if, an, if a customer is accessing your website from Australia, the the traffic even the dynamic one travels from london to australia on amazon network and leaves the amazon network only on an edge location which is there in australia near to the customer this will help you in two ways the speed wise it would be better lower latency of course because you have better network second is in terms of cost if you go ahead and look at the data out charges of your ELB or of your EC2 instance and compare it with the data out charges of CloudFront, uh, CloudFront offers you lower data out charges. So you can go ahead and save money in that way. Also, you can go ahead and do reservation uh, on the data out in terms of, uh, you know, in case of CloudFront. So you can, if you do reservation, you get even lesser cost, right? So those are the benefits. Now, what we are going to do uh, is in the demo, we will Go ahead and look at a uh, uh, look at an application which is which has an ELB and it has got a web servers and private subnet as you can see here. We and uh, the application which is deployed in these web servers uh, that application uses all the static assets uh, which are stored in the S3, but it does not access but it is not referring those static assets via S3 URL. Rather, it is referring those static assets via CloudFront URL. So let me go ahead and show you the same. Okay. So in our VPC, we have uh, four subnets, two public and two private, as you can see. Okay. And then we have got two uh, servers in the private subnet. You can see here they've got only private IPs, so they are there in two different private subnets. Okay, and I have created an ELB. In case you need guidance that how to create an ELB and how to 
how to register instances there is another video where i have explained that in detail so you can go ahead and take a look at it now the two instances which i have created one and two they are registered to this elb and they are in healthy status which means if i go ahead and open this it should be working fine yes it works i will also go ahead and actually right this so that you can see yes this is opening and if i refresh it goes to different pages as well now uh, just a minute let me show you this okay as you can see i'm currently referring it with the elb url right elb demo so uh, as of now doesn't matter from which part of the world i access this url this uh, uh, ELB exists in North Virginia, so from North Virginia to that part of the world, it travels over the public public internet, right? Now, let us go ahead and do view page source for this. You can see I am referring some of the static assets here in this page. Uh, this is the one CSS, one CSS file. There's this another CSS file. There's this image.png, right? All of these are accessed uh from a cloud front url as you can see which means let's say uh this website is hosted in north virginia right and i access it from australia for example so the the static i mean this dynamic part currently is traveling from north virginia to australia on the public network but because these images these static assets i'm using via cloud front so on this page all the static things which got downloaded got downloaded from an edge location in australia which is near to me okay that's just something which you have to understand now next step what i want to do is i want to serve this complete website even this these even this dynamic page from a cloud front url and hence i want to ensure that the even the dynamic part doesn't travel from north virginia to australia on public network rather it comes via cloud front url and hence gets served from an edge location which is near to me okay so all right now let me go ahead and show you a few more things uh, so i have an s3 bucket called triple two oct 2016 in that i have created a folder called assets and then within assets sorry within assets i have css and js and css inside that i've got all the necessary things so these are the uh, these are the uh, files which I was accessing from this particular page, if you see, right? But you, but you can see I am accessing it via CloudFront URL and not the S3 URL. I'm not accessing it any object via S3 URL. So let us go ahead and see. I have created a CloudFront distribution already. And in this CloudFront distribution, I'll, let us go and see in detail. So there's another tutorial which explains you to set up CloudFront distribution from scratch, okay? You can go ahead and look at it. So in this CloudFront distribution, I've kept two origins, right? As I showed you in the PPT, uh, the traffic is gonna be served by an ELB and via an S3 bucket. So these are the two origins which I've created. If you go ahead and just create a new origin, you can see all the buckets will be shown or any ELB should get shown. You can go ahead and just specify path and just go ahead. Let me go ahead and show you the ones which I have created and it should be understandable. So for the ELB, I have chosen the name. I have given slash server because uh, if you see the URL which I was accessing was slash server slash index.php. Now, if I don't want to write slash server, I just want to access index.php, I can put that slash server part here in the origin. So it will get included while you know while while the request goes to the elb uh, uh, basically cloudfront will include that so i've done that uh, i've just checked all the protocols and it is running on port 80 and that's it i'm keeping it simple and remember uh, so this is one origin this is the second origin uh, which is the basically the bucket s3 bucket uh, i've restricted the bucket access so that only the only this particular uh, CloudFront user is able to read the things from that bucket and not anybody else, right? So if somebody has the S3 URL as well, even then they cannot go ahead and basically get the objects. 
now the next and the important thing is setting up the behavior now you can see that i have to send all the php type of requests here and anything which is anything else right jpg css js all that i need to send here so what did i do for that uh, first is i've created one behavior and this i have said star.php anything which is dot php type that you should send to elb origin right which is two origins we just created so that's sent to elb1 i'm allowing http http uh, both and then other things i'm just leaving default yeah object caching i've used customized and i made default etl to be zero i don't want anything to be cached at the cloud front level any request which comes and which is of like dynamic in nature having this php dot php send it to the elp directly don't cache anything okay and the and i've kept the precedence to be zero and this will take first priority and then you have the second one where it says star so anything which is left over from the first one everything goes to the s3 right so that means automatically all the js php all the js images css files will go to this one now you can go ahead and instead of default you can go ahead and create n different types of things right you can have like two different uh, uh, dynamic things and two three buckets and you can create n number of behaviors and origins here in case of this one because it is static i am i have left the ttl to be default ttl is time to live so this is like 24 hours and uh, 24 hours things would be cached okay so you set this up that's it and after you have done this you can come here and look at your cloudfront distribution currently it is in the deployed state uh, remember whenever you do a change it takes some time for that change to get implemented it can range from any time from anything from 10 to 15 minutes in case you are adding origin and behavior so be patient in that case i just finished that so that i can show you in the video quickly and so let us go ahead and now access using the this particular url so this is my cloud front url okay all right so see here i'm accessing it using directly index.php if you see the same thing here if you see this here when i access it from elp i have to i had to write server index.php but when i'm accessing it now from the cloudfront url i got https as well all cloudfront urls will have https uh, you know free of cost you'll have https so go ahead and make use of it right and i am just writing index.php so now the dynamic content is getting served from cloudfront and of the static part you already know i have shown you so in this if you go and look at the image and all the css urls all of those things are 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 basically accessing the resource via cloudfront url that means that also will get downloaded via off from the edge location now let us go ahead and just refresh this and see whether the round robin is working or not yes 156 83 86 83 right so okay all right so uh, this is something which i wanted to show you now uh, i hope this helps you so the key things to learn here are that uh, the behavior and the origin part so whether your dynamic application is php jsp or aspx anything you can set up the behavior and point it to the origin which is your elb and for all the static things send it to the s3 bug s3 origin right and ensure that within your code you are you are using or referring all the static assets using the cloudfront url only so i hope that helps so please go ahead and start uh, using cloudfront uh, thanks for watching the video if you like it please go ahead and share it with your friends subscribe to the channel a lot more is coming thank you bye bye